Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Bergman. And this is Mr. Sams. Hey, hey Mr. Sams. How are um, you doing today? I'm great. doing quite nicely. It's got a nice little snow coming down outside. It's yes, nice. indeed. Up here in our mountainous place that we live in. Yeah. Here we are. We are right here in the mountains of Hello. Colorado. Hello. And of course, today we're talking about... Uh, Thermodynamics. Yes, thermodynamics. It's kind of appropriate with the uh, weather system. Thermodynamics. See, I can do the crazy accent things like like Mr. Bergman does. Too. What did you just? I say? said thermodynamics. That sounds like you, you 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 ate a prune or something. A prune? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like prunes actually. Oh, it just it didn't sound right. No. Uh, you need some help. I yeah. Know, my like my nondescript counseling? accent doesn't doesn't doesn't. You work. know, talk like this is how you talk. I think is yes. My, oh, okay. No? Well, I'll, I'll keep trying. Let's see what happens. <laughs> hey, we want to talk about a new chapter today, chapter 16, thermodynamics. This is the easiest chapter of the year. Easy schmeasy. That's right. Um, thermodynamics. Thermo, what's thermo mean? Thermo, heat or energy-ish. Heat or energy. So, folks, what I want you to do is I want you to write that down, that heat or energy is the, what thermo mean. And what does the word dynamic mean? It means motion. All right, so it's talking about motion. Can't write today. Motion is, uh, so it's like the, think of it this way. It's the flow of energy. So yep. thermodynamics is the discussion um, or the study of the flow of energy. Good? Yep. Okay, so now, this is now podcast 16.1. We've got uh, three big topics to talk about. In this particular chapter, we have um, a number of different topics. By the way, those of you in internet land, we should make a note here. What do these references numbers mean? Uh, those numbers? are the, uh, the section numbers in the Zumdahl book that we use. Yeah, this is Zumdahl's sixth edition of the textbook, of chemistry textbook, that you can purchase. So the, that's what these refer to, by the way, just for FYI. So we're going to cover these sections. So yep. we're gonna today we're going to cover um, the first four sections, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. All right, so what makes things happen? <clears throat> Breakfast. Breakfast makes things happen. Yeah. How does that work? Uh, I don't know. It just makes me go in the morning. Coffee makes me go in the morning. You're the breakfast guy. <laughs> in what sense does it make you go? It gives me energy. Oh, okay. Gives yeah. So okay. I put energy in because things tend to go to a low energy state. Oh. So my body wants to go to a low energy state, so I have to refuel it periodically. Coffee yeah. doesn't exactly let me fuel it. Just... So that cup of joe that you have in the morning, okay, that gives you energy to go. If I put sugar in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really have many calories on its own. That's true. You need the old C12H22O11, right? Yep. Yeah, I love that C12H22O11. It can be addictive a little bit. But that's not the only thing that nope. happens. In fact, you know, when you put that cube of sugar in yeah. that coffee? Yeah. Um, it dissolves. It does. But why does it dissolve? Because things like also in the universe to be more disordered. What, what do you mean more disordered? How well, does that work with this cube of sugar? Well, the cube of sugar is it has this nice ordered crystal structure, and then you put it into the liquid, and it kind of falls apart into individual little crystals and then individual molecules. So it kind of gets like spread out. It gets then. spread out. Yeah, yeah. kind of like stuff on my desk. I start out the school year with a nice oh. clean desk, and three hours into the school year, it's piled up with junk. Three hours? Yeah, yeah. It takes that long. how long it lasts, yeah. So your desk gets all kind of mad. Yeah, and I don't have to do anything to do it. It just happens on its own. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and this is called... Actually, low energy is called, or the energy in this instance is called what? Uh, that's enthalpy. So we're going to be more scientific now. A-L-P-Y. Enthalpy. Enthalpy. N-T-H-A-L-P-Y. There we go. And then disorder, the measure of disorder is? Entropy. Entropy. So there's two big E words, entropy and enthalpy, yep. that we need to discuss, and we will at length here. Yeah. And by the way, our background picture, we should make a quick note of that, the background picture here is like the galaxies and the stars mm, and what's happening the universe the universe what's happening is to the universe is it's becoming more disordered right as it a actually, whole as a whole it is more ordered it is there are areas yeah. of order for example this star right here whatever yep. it but it is it is becoming more disordered as time goes on yes. in the universe okay so let's uh, talk about a couple of uh, definitions important definitions now, what's spontaneous mean? Uh, that's when I just decide to do something out of the blue. You know, no, it's not. I mean, yes, it is, but that's not what we're talking about here. I thought we were teaching them chemistry. Oh, the chemistry terms, the yes. The chemistry terms. Spontaneous, yeah. it's just something <clears throat> happens on its own. It, you just kind of set something up and it goes. Kind of like putting a ball at the top of the hill. It will spontaneously roll down the hill. You will not see a ball spontaneously rolling up a hill. 
Okay, so take the ball, and it rolls downhill. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm good the that. ball rolls down the hill. Yes. See, I can do the I can do Or, the you know, crazy the sugar too. dissolves in the coffee. Yeah. It doesn't spontaneously go into the cube. You have to do something to it so to make it So you can't just leave out the coffee and it'll turn into a cube of sugar. Right. Not going to happen. No. Ever. By yeah. itself. It could, but statistically speaking, it's not. No. Yeah. All right. And then we have this concept called entropy. Yep. Okay. Entropy is a measure of the... Uh, the, the measure of the amount of disorder in a system. Write this down, folks. Okay. Now, be careful there. It's the amount of disorder. So if you increase entropy, you increase the amount of disorder. So we can say the higher the entropy, mm-hmm. what? The more disorder. Disorder. Yes. And we're going to uh, identify this with a symbol delta S. Delta meaning change, and S is our symbol for entropy. Yeah, that little triangle, guys, is, is means change in something. We've yep. seen like delta T's before. It means mm-hmm. change in temperature. And enthalpy was delta H. Yeah, you know, should probably, you should go back and write that down for enthalpy, right? On this side, write delta H here. And for this one, write delta S. S. Yes. Okay. So higher entropy means more disordered. And we should talk about that in terms of, of the states of matter. Yes. So it's all let's gas. do that real fast. Hold on while Mr. Bergman gets to his new thing. Ah. Wrong one. All right. We're getting there. It is. There uh-huh. we go. We're using a new program, by the way, to make this. And so, so we're learning new we're things. We're learning a few here. new things. There are various different substances. Okay. There's some. Um, Solids. Solids, and there's liquids, mm-hmm. and there's gases. Yeah. So I said, let's label this entropy. Now, who has more or less entropy? Solids, liquids, or gases? Solids have the least amount of entropy because they are least disordered. They are the most ordered. They have nice, happy crystalline structures. Um, gases are the most disordered, so they have the highest entropy. Actually, the word gas is a transliteration of the Greek word chaos. And so we could kind of do it like this. Gases have a greater entropy than liquids, mm-hmm. and liquids have a greater entropy than the solids. Yeah. Remember, the, the solids typically are ordered structures, and if you had, a say, a flask filled with a gas... They're all over the place. What you're going to find is... A bunch of spheres they're flying all over the place going everywhere and so they're not kind of in any particular pattern and so that would be the issue yep okay all right moving on 